Hello, I am Neeraj Kumar. In this part of the tutorial, I will explain how we can design a quantum CNN architecture for any particular purpose like classification, regression, task, etc. But before going into the details, please make sure that you know the basics of quantum system like what is qubit, what is quantum gate, what is quantum circuit, how we can design a basic quantum deep learning architecture circuit. I already explained those things in my previous tutorials. So either you can go and follow some textbook and read those things or you can watch the previous tutorials. And even in this tutorial, I will just explain that what is the convolution layer in the context of quantum CNN, what is the pooling layer in the context of quantum CNN and how it works. In the previous tutorial, I already explained that how we can take some external data, we encode the data so that we can use it in quantum system, means quantum circuit, deep learning circuit. Again, the next important part of any CNN is it contains a stack of convolution and pooling layers. So here are stacks of convolution and pooling layers. The concept of convolution layer and pooling operation is almost same that we use in the classical deep learning architecture. So I already posted a lot of videos on uh, convolution layer and pooling layer and uh, basics of CNN. So you can watch and understand those things. So in this part of the tutorial, I am assuming that uh, you have used the external 4 qubit input, pass those input to encoding system. Encoding system generated the output. Now we will add some convolution layer. So how to add the convolution layer? For that we pick some kernel. Kernel of size 2, 3, 4, like that based on the requirements. But here, as we have uh, just 4 qubits, so I found that 2 and 3 will be the better choice. So how we can achieve those things? Suppose we take the cube qubit size kernels in convolution layer in, four, in the context of quantum scene. So first of all, we selected x1 and x2. And for x1 and x2, we just uh, rotated the encoded x2 output by a minus pi by 2 angle through the z axis and after that I had applied the entanglement. In this entanglement, this is control, this is target. So the entanglement value will be calculated by using C0 architect, C0 gate. I had clearly explained what is the C0 gate, what is its property in the previous lectures. So once you get the output, we again rotate both output through some angles in the y direction like theta1 angle, theta2 or we can say that theta1 parameter or theta2 parameter. Here the theta1, theta2, theta3, theta4 all those theta is actually the learnable parameters. These are equivalent to learning the weight for neurons in the classical deep learning architecture. So now after rotating those values, we again apply the entanglement. Now here it is control, it is target. So after computation by using C note, we again pass it through some rotation again against y axis through theta 3 parameter. Again we pass it through some entanglement here. This is control, this is target. After computing the entanglement through C note gate, we pass it through some rotation against y axis through theta 4 angle. So now what happens? We covered this. So now suppose we want to get the kernels which covers x1, x2, again uh, x3, x4 and suppose x2, x3. Like such kind of kernel we are thinking. 
So what we will do now after that we will select these things. <coughs> so uh, here the space is uh, not uh, proper to explain all those things. So that's why I have written here. Don't consider it as a separate block. Just to explanation, I had uh, keep uh, explain it separately. So here we took the X4 output from uh, encoding side, encoding function, and then we rotate it through minus pi by 2. All these rotations, you say that why we will rotate those things, that I also explained that all these rotations and other things depends upon how you manage angles in block sphere means how you select a particular angle, how much uh, space in this uh, means uh, block sphere you want to cover. I am not considering it uh, in this current series because it will uh, it, it will itself take a lot of time to explain. So I am just uh, giving the overview. So based on your requirement, your mindset that what kind of uh, rotations you want, you can fix. But here it is minus 5 by 2 just to uh, get some uh, means uh, transpose kind of thing. After that we take the entanglement, here it is control, this is target, calculate the sino. Then again we rotate this through theta 6 and th theta 5 and theta 6 angle through y directions. Again we take entanglement, here it is control, this is target. Again we make a rotation against y axis through theta 7 angles. Again we take the entanglement with this control, this target. Again we rotate Ry through theta at angle. After that we can take like x2 and x3. Suppose this is my design choice. So this I will put here and then we will take this part and write the similar kind of thing. Then we will get some kernel output. Actually, why we use this kernel or different different size? Like uh, kernel size 2 means we are trying to get the overlap of two features. Information from overlap of two features, information from overlap of three space coverage or features or qubit, like that. So in three case, uh, we can select either this three or this three kind of thing. And then we will generate the output. So this is the convolution system. Actually convolution system we have a full freedom to take any other kind of other thing other than rotations or entanglement you can take any other quantum gates also based on the design thinking you have in your mind. For example I got uh, one difference that I will share here you can see that the Current published work on quantum kernel, quantum convolution layer that so many different different ways people used to design those kernels, those convolution layers. So this is one of them. This is not necessary that you will stick to this design also. You can select any of them. I will uh, post this uh, resource also. So after getting the convolution layer we generate the output and after that we will fade the output to pulling layer. So how the pulling layer work? So in pulling layer, again for simplicity, I have just covered the two inputs, two qubit, qubit inputs and we assume that we pa already pass it through this part and this is the, and after that we pass it through this convolution layer also means uh, first we pass it through ux layer then we pass it through convolution layer and after that the output we have we just uh, considering two for simplicity so for in that case what we are doing just taking the minus pi by 2 rotations for the second case using the entanglement with this control and this target Again rotating both outputs through theta1 and theta2 parameters. Again taking the reverse entanglement. Here it is control, this is target and take the value. Again we rotate the output through z axis 
and through theta 3 parameter. Now, what we will do, different from this, in instead of considering both, we will just consider this output and we will neglect this output. So, that's why we will be able to reduce the dimensionality and uh, we will reduce the numbers and get the important features. Just like uh, we do in the max pooling kind of thing. Similarly, we can do average pooling, achieve average pooling, mean pooling, etc. in this design also. But what we have to do, we have to manage the gate design in such a way that the output will be equivalent to average pooling or max pooling or mean pooling. So it is upon you how you design the this part. I had uh, gone through this paper, <coughs> multi-class classification using quantum convolution neural network with hybrid quantum classical learning. So they had mixed uh, quantum and classical learning, but the, it is published in uh, November 2022. The important thing that uh, it describes like how we can take and compute the uh, means 4 qubit uh, filter, 3 qubit filter, 2 qubit filters with uh, 4 qubit uh, arrangement like kind of like dimensions like that. So here they had represented some lot of different ways to design the same convolution and pooling layers. So that's why there are a lot of different different ways. There is no limitations in this uh, system. After that, we can put uh, the convolution and pooling layers stacks, and after that, there will be some output here. So in the previous tutorial, I have already explained how we can manage the output here, and after that how we can manage the complete epoch setting like uh, we run the entire system multiple times and update the weight of those parameters means to fully train the system so I am not covering those parts so I think uh, I have covered most basic things like how you can design the quantum CNN architecture I, and I believe that after the getting through such information, you will be able to understand all the latest research work published in the area of quantum deep learning architecture, quantum CNN kind of thing. So in the next part, I will try to explain how we can write code for such kind of architectures. And I will also try to explain like what is the quantum LSTM architecture, how we can achieve or how we can get the similar architecture which are available in the classical deep learning system and how we can implement or we can design those things in the quantum deep learning architecture. So thanks for watching.